Good afternoon and welcome everyone. We are pleased to have you join us. Today's webinar is hosted by the American Traffic Safety Services Foundation. My name is Lori Diaz and I'll be today's moderator. Please note that the webinar is being recorded and all participant lines will be muted during the broadcast. Today's presentation will be about 60 minutes in length and will include a specific question and answer period toward the end of the program. If during the webinar you have a question or comment from one of our panelists, we ask that you utilize the Q&A feature. I would like to now turn it over to one of today's panelists, Tom Robbins, president of Solid Foundation Consulting and founder of WorkZoneSafe.com to get us started. Tom? All right, thank you, Lori. Appreciate the introduction. Definitely appreciate the partnership. This is something I know that we have worked towards and look forward towards to uh, over the last couple of months. So I'm excited to be able to do this. Uh, with me today from the state of Oklahoma, I have our Director of State Traffic Engineering from ODOT, Lauren Parrish, and then also have uh, from Traffic Engineering Division, uh, Marty Ferris. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. And uh, today we're excited to talk about a new opportunity that's rolling out nationally in partnership with ATSA as our first uh, of our first uh, sponsor and supporter. But I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna share my screen so that everybody can see our... All right, Lori, maybe you can give me a thumbs up if you guys can see that first screen with everybody's names on it and everything. Fantastic. All right, so all of us are here today because the number one priority is the safety, the safety of our, of our families, our safety of our work families, of our contractors, of the people uh, that we go out with every single day and that we're on the on the road with but you know we need to modernize our efforts and our engagement so today is all about ripping ripping up the pamphlets and modernizing our teen driver works on safety efforts so participating or hearing this webinar you're going to have actionable tools that you'll be able to take back to your chapter take back to your company take back to your state to implement immediately uh, with modernized tools that you can start educating and engaging teen drivers uh, in the work zone. But maybe you're asking the question, why Oklahoma? Why, why did this start here? How did this all get going? Well, um, let me just move this slide here forward. Is all of us share in this opportunity for the priority of being work zone safe? You see a picture on the left, that's Trooper Eric Foster from Oklahoma. He was hit while working in a work zone. On the right, that's the memorial there uh, with our Oklahoma Secretary of Transportation, Tim Gatz. But the question is, why or how do we modernize our tools? Well, here in Oklahoma, we faced a crisis just a few years ago. I was serving as the uh, Deputy Secretary of Energy. So I worked for the previous governor, uh, a little bit of background, um, uh, Governor Mary Fallon, the state of Oklahoma, and worked with her cabinet as, a, as the Deputy Secretary of Energy. So uh, Oklahoma is a big energy producing st uh, state, a lot of wind, a lot of oil, a lot of natural gas. And what modern drilling means ultimately uh, from vertical to horizontal. And for those that are participating from an oil or gas producing state, you'll know this well from my friends from New Mexico or Texas or other states that I hope that you're with us, is that ultimately means that thousands of trucks are gonna show up on your roadways. And what I noticed was as billions of dollars were being invested in a handful of counties throughout Oklahoma, what this meant was is that typically rural areas of Oklahoma, these one-stop light time, uh, towns, in Oklahoma, you basically need a school, a stoplight, and a sonic uh, to be an official uh, town in, in Oklahoma. And what those towns were experiencing now was an influx of all this traffic. And so as I observed the situation as the Deputy Secretary of Energy, what I noted was is that people were reacting to this new traffic environment and that negative things were starting to pop up, just like it happened in other states when oil and gas um, readily started being built. And so in the state of Oklahoma, what happened was is I took this to the governor and to the cabinet, to the commissioner of public safety, and I said, hey, something needs to be done here because if not, we're going to have a transportation crisis and we're going to have a safety crisis. And so what I proposed was that we get everybody together in the state of Oklahoma, from our Oklahoma Department of Transportation to their engineering team, uh, to Lauren's uh, group, to our um, Highway Safety Office and our Oklahoma Highway Patrol and to our Department of Public Safety, to our educators, and to get everybody who had a piece of this puzzle to be able to go and solve it. Well, sometimes when you identify a problem and then you also put forth a solution, you got to be ready for someone to say, okay, you go do that. 
So that's exactly what Governor Fallon did. She said, hey, Tom, my administration's wrapping up. You need to go ahead and solve this issue. You need to take it on. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? And uh, the Secretary of Energy and Environment grabbed me, Mike Teague, and he said, hey, I think you should leave your uh, this job, and I think that you should uh, I think you should tackle this program. And so that's exactly what I did. So four years ago in the state of Oklahoma, in partnership with ODOT, Highway Patrol, Highway Safety Office, industry, is that I started the Energize for Safety Coalition, a nonprofit focused on energy traffic and safety in the state of Oklahoma. And what we found there was uh, a great opportunity that everybody, just like everybody on the call here today, um, wanted to have a safe environment uh, for those traveling on the roads in Oklahoma, particularly for our kids and our young teen drivers that were at risk. And so in partnership with the Secretary of Transportation, the Commissioner of Public Safety, uh, the head of the Highway Safety Office, uh, the Chief Patrol Officer for Highway Patrol and Industry, we got together monthly and started identifying what we could do. And we came up with what is now an award-winning model of engineering, enforcement, education, and engagement. And for the purposes of today, what I want to focus on is it was that dialogue with industry, with our engineering leads at ODOT, uh, but then also having a plan to educate and engage our, our, our new drivers. What we recognized very quickly is that driver's ed, and it's probably the same in the state that you're calling in from or participating from, has basically been defunded primarily. It's not available much in the schools anymore. There's two options online that's parent-led. And then there's another option sometimes for people to be able to go to a driving school. Unfortunately, these kids and these new teen drivers just weren't getting the attention and focus that they needed to be able to be safe drivers and to be able to handle this new environment. So we pioneered and piloted a new program in Oklahoma to go to these all these communities with an hands-on effort to be able to educate and engage these teen drivers. And you can see from these pictures here, it was a great effort. You can see that young lady, she's in the cab of that truck. Quite frankly, new teen drivers do not understand or appreciate how to be safe because they don't have an appreciation for the equipment, whether it be construction, oil and gas or otherwise that they share the road with. So they're distracted, they're speeding, they're not committed maybe to wearing a seatbelt, they're tailgating, they're shooting the gap, they're not reading the signs. Quite frankly, they're just learning poor driving habits um, and aren't getting supported or a reason why they should have good driving habits. So we did this all throughout the state where oil and gas was produced and we had great success in partnering with many organizations and taught and educated thousands of teen drivers in the state of Oklahoma. From ODOT's perspective, we were able to put in some engineering fixes on some of the major oil and gas corridors. And with our friends at the Highway Patrol, we put in a uh, highway safety corridor on a main artery of energy traffic and safety, Highway 33 in Oklahoma. And uh, that's for another day, but I'll just skip right to the end and let you know that within three years of putting in that safety corridor, we saw a 63% reduction in crashes on that highway safety corridor. So really commend Lauren's um, group, that team, um, that, that part of ODOT office, that had helped develop that and um, Marty and, and, and everybody that we worked with, but it was a great success. What happened was, is I got to know the Secretary of Transportation, got to know the Commissioner of Public Safety, got to know the ODOT, the local Matern Pike family and the contractors. I started to notice orange ribbons. And as somebody who had not been involved in transportation safety before and hadn't you know, been, been trained on driver safety since I was 15 and was now you know, approaching 40, I started to ask questions and I was shocked, absolutely shocked to find out that over 70 ODOT employees had been killed uh, just doing their jobs, just going out and never returned home uh, because of uh, that they were impacted on the roadway. I was shocked to find out that it wasn't just Oklahoma, but it was all across the country. And so at that moment, I knew that something had to change. I knew that we had to take a different approach. And we all have seen the stats. You guys can see some here. Oklahoma is not an outlier. Um, we're pretty much um, fall in line just with everywhere else in the country. But this last year in 2021 uh, 20, uh, was the most dangerous when it comes to fatalities across uh, the, the modern transportation road system. So what's happening? We have, because of ATSA members and because of great team members like here at ODOT, we have the safest engineered roads and we have great engineering solutions that are being implemented. Uh, from a, from a, just a crash test perspective, we have safer and safer cars that are inter, being introduced in the roads. What we have are more and more unsafe drivers. 
drivers that are on the road that forget that their number one responsibility is the safety of themselves, passengers, and those that they share the road with. They're distracted, they're speeding, they're not wearing their seatbelts. And we have a new crop of teen uh, drivers who are learning very poor habits that are being modeled by their parents or grandparents or peers. And quite frankly, they are not getting what they need from driver schools, whether that's online um, or in person when it comes to work zone safety. And so as we all know, the Secretary of Transportation, Buttigieg, has declared a public health crisis, and rightfully so. We're looking at the next five years being the most dangerous in modern transportation history when it comes to our, our roads. And when I started to poke around and, and ask questions about what was being done to address this crisis, I approached it in the same way that I'd done to address energy traffic and safety. And I did sort of an audit of what was out there and, and how, were, um, uh, how were people engaging uh, young teen drivers on this topic. And what I found was is that most DOTs uh, were doing what they had done for a number of years. If and when they did educate and engage teen drivers, they typically did that with a pamphlet, a pen and a bag, a short, just little talk, and then that teenager was sent on their way. Occasionally, every once in a while, maybe a, a ODOT or a contractor crew would get out there and do a face-to-face -face talk, but it was a little bit of hit or miss, or there was no strategy, or there was no coordination to make sure that that was happening. So in response to this crisis, um, I went to the Secretary of Transportation of Oklahoma, our Commissioner of Public Safety, and said, I have a, want to modernize our tools and our approach. And lucky uh, because of the relationships that were there, Oklahoma and the senior leadership at ODOT and um, at the uh, Commissioner of Public Safety with the DPS and the Highway Patrol were 100% all in. And so what I did was I created a hands-on program to give team drivers the hands-on experience that they would need to be able to successfully navigate work zones. And we took an approach that had these three steps. Number one is that we wanted to give teen drivers the opportunity to become partners in work zone safety. If you talk to a teen driver right now and you mention work zones and they're a young teen driver, one, they don't have the education or knowledge they need to successfully and confidently navigate that work zone. Number two is they are scared. They're literally sweating, white knuckle driving through our work zones. The way that they learn how to drive through a work zone is just doing it. And, and, and that's a poor way to be able to introduce um, this driving behavior and the safety precautions they need to be taking and thinking about uh, to them. So we decided that, that we were going to educate and engage our teen drivers with modernized tools, cooperating with a broader base of partners. We wanted to get that orange ribbon, not just championed by those that were in the building with ODOT or with our contractors, but wanted to start reaching out to our educators and our community leaders and our elected officials and uh, people that hadn't heard that message. And most importantly, those new teen drivers. And then number three, we wanted to recognize and reward teen drivers for their commitment to being work zone safe. So we just decided that, look, teen drivers aren't getting the education engagement that they need. They're not pausing and learning about work zone safety. But we believe when they do and they understand the role that they play, that many of them will commit to being work zone safe and they'll develop habits that are safe. And when they do that, we want to recognize and reward them. One of the exciting things about the foundation with ATSA is it like many across the country raises funds and helps those, particularly teens or, or um, as they become college students, if their parents have been permanently injured or killed in a work zone. What we want to do and what we've done with this program is we begin to flip the script on that and say, well, let's recognize and reward teens uh, for being work zone safe uh, so that we can give them scholarships for champion for being champions of work zone safety. So visually, this is what it looks like. Um, this last year, we did this in Oklahoma. It was adopted by the Oklahoma Department of Transportation, Oklahoma Highway Safety Office, our um, Highway Patrol, our Department of Public Safety. And we partnered with Oklahoma Highway Safety Office to go out to events across Oklahoma. And we partnered with our ODOT districts for the first time ever at these events where highway safety was already doing seatbelts, DUIs, and other education engagement. And we asked uh, ODOT to provide volunteers and to set up a flagger zone. And so throughout the state of Oklahoma, we did about 20 of these different events with about 13,000 um, students across the state of Oklahoma throughout all of our districts uh, with ODOT. So I wanna give Lauren and Marty just a chance to talk a little bit about from an ODOT perspective, how this has been received by the ODOT employees and how it's kind of fallen in with a priority with ODOT um, as far as from an ODOT perspective. Yeah, thanks Tom. 
Um, we've just really seen how much of a benefit this program is, um, as well as to the team drivers, as well as um, our own um, maintenance and district workers. Um, they have enjoyed sharing their own um, personal stories that they've seen when they're out on a work zone, um, and they get to see the direct impact it has on these team drivers. And um, the firsthand experience is so impactful. Um, there's an actual name and a face that they can relate to um, with their own family. Um, the workers also take it seriously because they know it's an opportunity to make a difference in driver behavior. Um, they, that student that they're talking to may be the one that drives through their particular work zone um, and remembers what they heard at this event um, and most importantly slows down, pays attention to the road conditions and reads the signs. Um, so our workers have also really enjoyed this program. Um, Marty, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, but, you know, the big thing for our workers, too, is, you know, none of them got into doing road work to be public speakers, um, to get out and, and meet the people. But, you know, getting them out and engaging their own communities, um, they're all really good at that. You know, and as soon as you get them in front of those first students and give them that opportunity to open up and connect one on one, they all fall right into it. They love sharing what they do for a living um, with these kids and, you know, really hoping to make an impact in their community beyond just uh, serving the roads there. So I appreciate those comments. In the state of Oklahoma, which was the first uh, state to adopt the Work Zone Safe program, this hands-on giving kids an opportunity, these new teen drivers, to have what we call a face behind the flag talk or face behind the cone, to be able to humanize that and to hear directly from an ODOT worker in their community is very powerful. And then to be able to be walked through a flagger zone, which is what we set up, um, talking about the different um, challenges and safety, um, uh, safety pitfalls there are when navigating one is the first time any of these teen drivers have one typically been able to interact with one of our DOT or contract em employees, or to be able to give them an opportunity to ask questions or to learn about how to navigate um, certain scenarios like a work zone. And so just like Marty said that the workers really light up and they really respond to this. And after the first go around, they're really excited and they kind of warm up to being able to share. I will tell you, and this will probably be a webinar for another day, is that in 2023 in the spring, our Secretary of Transportation, Tim Gatz, along with the regional NHTSA Administrator, uh, Maggie Gunnels, with our Director of Highway Safety, which we'll do in coordination with ATSA, is wanting to host in Oklahoma anybody who's interested in coming to one of these events at one of these schools where we're doing this traffic safety event with this work zone safety element and invite you to come participate, be a volunteer, boots on the ground, we'll put you to work. And then afterwards, we'll do a breakdown session and a training, and we'll give you that PDF pamphlet of playbook of how to be able to implement that in your state. So we won't talk much more about the hands-on event because we wanna focus on um, the online program that we've created that we can put in your hands today. But if you're interested in doing this, if this has piqued your interest, if you wanna be like Oklahoma where the Secretary of Transportation has asked the ODOT divisions to support all of these, and we've gotten a great response, we'll give you an opportunity in the spring to come out with us and to be able to do a hands-on event and training, and we'll make that available to all the ATSA chapters across the country. So um, as we move forward here, I'll show you, um, this is a little bit of the, the in-person stuff that we do as well. It's a hands-on game show that we bring in through the Highway Safety Office that mixes pop culture um, with uh, teaching teens about how to be safe behind the wheel, including works on safe driving. That one picture on the right is, is an exercise that we're doing that's helping them open up and talk and engage with their peers. And then we ask them about distracted driving in a work zone and how to stop that behavior. And we make it pure lead. Um, so this is just a list. You can see we did, uh, this is, it was our spring ones. We also did ones in the fall. We did about 20 of those. And you can see that face behind the flag talk that's happening there with one of our ODOT employees. All right. So the focus that we want to have today is this awesome online modernized tool that has been created that we're going to be able to put into your hands. So what we noticed was lacking was the ability for a teen driver to be able to step back and on their own time and in a modernized way, meaning an electronic device, whether that's their phone, their tablet, their laptop, and to be able to learn more about work zone safety and to be able to take that deep breath and to be able to give, be given that confidence, that education from us uh, to be able to safely navigate a work zone. So as a part of this program, I bought the domain worksonesafe.com. Um, we put together a curriculum, hired a curriculum director, and that's what I brought originally to the Secretary of Transportation. And he and the chief engineer and um, 
our commissioner of public safety said that they were all in. So this last year, uh, we launched in the state of Oklahoma, Oklahoma uh, Work Zone Safe Program. Oklahoma was the first state to adopt it. We've been piloting it here this last year, and we've had great success. So the focus of the online program is to give teen drivers an opportunity to learn work zone safe behaviors, work zone safe signs and laws, but then most importantly, to learn about the faces of work zone safety, the employees, the contractors, those in the industry, the first responders, um, everybody that they share the work zone with. Here in Oklahoma, we've successfully been able to also recognize and reward work zone safe teen drivers by one, offering them a 60 minute jump pass at a popular trampoline park here in Oklahoma, two, um, providing for a safe driver discount, which we'll talk about here in a minute on the national one, and three, uh, giving them an opportunity to win now one of three $500 monthly scholarships that we're giving out to recognize and reward um, Oklahoma teens who are committed to being work zone safe by taking and completing this course. It was about this time that we were rolling this out is when I was introduced to Lori and her team. And I was really excited that we did because the mission of the foundation, again, is to educate and engage uh, people on, on being work zone safe. And while, while Lori and the foundation um, has done a great job in, in giving uh, scholarships uh, to those who've been, you know, parents have been permanently injured or killed in a work zone, when we had the conversation of what would it look like if we were able to now recognize and reward um, teen drivers, when I asked that question, who were willing to commit to being work zone safe, it was an exciting conversation. So, out of that, we had a bunch of other conversations uh, that developed, probably a half dozen or so. And um, it was decided that we would partner with ATS on a portion of it, and then we'd work towards a national team driver safety course. And so that's what we're announcing, and that's what I'm giving you today. So as of today, uh, we now have a national work zone safe course. ATS is the first to sponsor the national work zone safe program. And I'm going to walk you through it, and I'll show it to you online. But it's a, it's, a, it's a tool and a resource that it's available to you today to bring back to your DOT, to bring back to your company, to share with contractors, to walk in the door and talk to principals, superintendents, to uh, let your um, state, the driving schools in your state or your community to be able to know, to know about. Any teen driver uh, can be able to take this anywhere across the country with the program that we've developed. It'll take them about 45 minutes to an hour, so basically a class period, to be able to go through this course. And they're going to be educated and engaged on how to be a work zone safe team driver. And I'm proud to announce that, of course, the foundation has stepped up as they would to offer the first uh, sponsored scholarship. And we've already set up the back end to all that and been working with it and uh, been tinkering with it. And it works great. And so we're looking forward to September offering our first national work zone safe uh, scholarship recipient across the country. Whether that will be a team driver in your state, completely up to you because you'll have the opportunity to be able to promote this, to be able to give this tool and resource out uh, to people that are in your state uh, and in your sphere of influence. So what I wanna do now is actually sh uh, share the screen and show you um, what, um, what the, uh, the Teen Driver Safe Work Zone program looks like. I put it in the chat, so hopefully everybody got it but you should be able to go to workzonesafe.com. So if you haven't done that, I know sometimes we're on webinars, people go off on different websites and things. That's completely awesome. That's exactly what we want you to do right now. So go to workzonesafe.com. You can see our website. We just re-engineered it uh, for this webinar um, at, so that it has a national focus as well, not just in Oklahoma. But you'll see there, the mission is to teach teams to be confident, capable, and safe drivers in the work zone that we have a program that's trusted by parents, schools, and communities. And as you scroll through the website, you'll see we have agency partners. Obviously we started in Oklahoma. What do we want? We want your agency to be a partner. So if you're representing a DOT, if you're representing a highway patrol, if you're representing any of that on the, on the state side, we're asking for you to be an engaged partner with us and to have that conversation, a follow-up call with me. I can host a webinar for you and your team, however you wanna do, but we want this so that your state is recognized and is promoting this. Um, as you go down, you'll see there also is a, a section there that talks about our scholarships. You click on that hyperlink, you'll see the previous winners. All of them have been in Oklahoma as of now, because that's where we piloted this this last year. Now that we're going national, 
we want teams to win in your state. We want from Alaska down to Florida, to Washington, D.C., to Maine, to California, to Hawaii. We want your state to be proud of having somebody who won. And the way we do that is we randomly select somebody who has successfully completed the program. And then sponsorships, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But ultimately, if your chapter, if your um, if your a company wants to become a sponsor of this national program, we can talk about that. We can provide scholarships and give us an opportunity to get out to some of these awesome conventions and spread the word and and uh, be able to expand our efforts. Um, I'm going to go to the top here. So when you go to the website, all you have to do here is you click. Unless you're in Oklahoma, you click in enroll in free national course. That's it. So you can go ahead and do that if you want. You can get started in that process while you're doing that. And by the way, you, anyone from your teams can take this course. We'll recognize you because there's a form that you fill out towards the end as somebody who's not a teen driver. So don't worry, you're not going to mess this up. You're not going to, you know, we're not going to give you a scholarship. It's, it's not going to be a problem. Lori and I will make sure. Uh, but we want you to be familiar with this course. We want you to be excited about it. We want you to be able to share it with others. So have your teams uh, when you're going to do a safety training or a town hall. Um, I can be involved or Lori can participate, but help us help you be able to do this uh, with, your, um, with your companies and with your agencies. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show, um, let's see here, I'm going to show you here um, the back end that you see as a student for our work zone safe course. Is that showing up, Lori? Is that back end part showing up the curriculum? Fantastic. All right. So what happens is, is that they just go through this course and they're going to learn about work zone safe behaviors. Each one of these modules has information for them to learn and it has videos um, direct from DOT employees and contractors and people impacted. And then it has a set of quiz questions. They need to watch those videos and they need to take those quizzes before they're able to move on to the next module. So I'm gonna click through some of these during the question and answer period, feel free to ask me any of these. Definitely want you to go through this on your own to get people on your team familiar with it. But for example, this first part of works on safe behaviors, I'm just going to click on distraction so you'll be able to see that. So when the teen driver gets to this point, they're going to learn about distractions, you know, stats. Everything that we do is geared towards trying to help them understand and make it personal to them. So the distracted um, example that we use is actually a teacher, teacher Bobby White, who was killed in a work zone, unfortunately, because of a distracted driver. Um, so what we want to do there is give an opportunity for those teens to have an experience because they all know teachers that they love and is, who's their favorite of thinking about what would happen if, if one of their teachers was hitting a work zone, right? And so they learn about that teacher, Bobby White. They learn about the different parts of distraction. Uh, they learn from some DOT employees uh, pleading with them to, 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 to not be distracted and to pay attention in a work zone. And then as you can see there, there's a series of questions. So they have to watch those videos and complete those questions to be able to move on. In addition to that, you'll see the next section, kind of same formula. They're going to learn about seatbelts. The examples that we've pulled out to use for seatbelts are, are, are not ambiguous. They're not made up. They're direct and they're teen related. So we have three examples there. One, unfortunately, um, just this last month in Minnesota, we had a teen driver who was killed as he, um, as he got into an area of a work zone that he shouldn't have and hit a dirt pile as his car flipped. He was not wearing a seatbelt and perished at the scene. There was two other teenagers, 17 and 16, who were wearing a seatbelt and, um, and um, did not, did not um, become a fatality. Um, and then you can see the other example there that we have in the middle. Um, we're also using the NHTSA and other nationally approved um, videos targeted towards teens and other communications to get across that, that message. Unfortunately, here in Oklahoma in this last year, we had a very tragic event where six teenage girls, all very young, 15 to 17, new drivers distracted, got into a Chevy Spark that was only meant to fit four. Six of them got in there. Only two were wearing seatbelts. They went off campus in a rural community uh, to go get lunch, as a lot of people do, being distracted, young drivers, not seatbelted, as they came back. Um, uh, they hit as they rolled a stop, unfortunately hit a rock hauler that was hauling, um, that was hauling gravel for a county road project. And so we, we use these examples because we want them to be specific to teens and we want them to be able to learn from those. So they're going to get helpful guidelines. They're going to get a quiz section there. Um, for example, this speeding question right here is going to talk specifically about our, our work zone, um, the consequences of it in a work zone. 
uh, the work zone safe laws. So because it's the national course, we've taken an umbrella approach of the sort of main laws that are germane or, or that applicable to all of the uh, um, uh, kind of all the states. So we talk about speeding, designated safe zones, temporary closings, move over laws, which is a huge deal, obviously, for our DOT, our contractors, but then also our first responder friends that are helping us in a work zone. And then endangerment of a highway worker. We have a great example. I don't like to say the word great. I guess we have a, we have a very specific example, uh, an unfortunate example of a teen who was in high school who, at the age of 18, um, was um, speeding. He also tested positive for marijuana and um, unfortunately killed somebody in a work zone. And as you see here, the consequences are real. Um, that means that that young man who's 18, William Birdsong, um, is going to be tried as an adult. Um, so teens really see the consequence and how their lives can change in just a moment, moment when they make an unsafe decision to get behind the wheel uh, in this case with the DUI situation, uh, driving under the influence uh, of marijuana, but then also as it plays out in a work zone, unfortunately killing somebody and then having to face adult consequences for doing so. And so you can see the questions here. If, if you're, you've always had these conversations and so we're reinforcing these. When can the general public drive through a designated safety area? Oh, when there's a gap between barricades, when there are no workers on site? Nope, never, right? And so they have to successfully complete the quiz. Um, our drivers are required to follow the direction of a flagman. Absolutely true. And so uh, work zone laws are only enforced when you can see workers present. Uh, that's false, as we know. You have to follow those laws in a work zone regardless of if that driver can see the work zone. And so you can see how we've set this up. It gives all these uh, teens an opportunity to be able to learn, think about, and, and, and learn. I'm going to go to this next part here, which I'm excited because we partnered uh, with the foundation in order to do this. But this is really taking work zone safety from a teen driver perspective. So they're nervous. Uh, they're anxious. They have a little bit of a fear. They have a lack of knowledge and understanding. They're just not getting it right now um, from mom or dad or from the courses that they're taking. So this is the real section where instead of just seeing two signs uh, that they quickly have to memorize and then you know, kind of um, just spit out on a test, uh, that uh, a driver's test. Uh, to be able to get that driver's license that might have a sign for a construction zone. This really goes deep and I'm proud of the work that's been done here, but it gives that teen driver the confidence they need among these different scenarios. And so the importance of work zone safety and really tying that into their responsibility behind the road, work zone signs, which they, when you talk to teens, they're very overwhelmed with the number of signs. So this slows it down for them. It gives them an explanation. It gives them an example and allows them to see the different signs that they'll encounter in a work zone. The work zone merging and devices, this can be tricky for even us adults, particularly think about an anxious young new driver for the first time. You know, in Oklahoma, we get kids who are maybe in a rural environment. They're going through the city or maybe their environment's changed on a two lane rural highway, whatever it is. And you get all these merging situations. So we really slow down and we work with them on the different merging devices that they'll be able to see, which many of you as probably members of ATSA produce and want to see that positive benefit to those teen drivers. So we're educating them here. Queuing and entering and exiting a work zone. This is a really anxious time, particularly for our young teen drivers. They are very scared about how they merge in and merge out, particularly if they don't have some of their right away taken away or there's a concrete barrier. So we will give them some time and some resources to think about merging and how they would do that and try to hopefully facilitate that conversation in their head before they encounter a work zone to be able to keep them safe. And of course, we have our mobile operations. As we know, uh, we're moving in a mobile environment and getting out there and laying down the equipment and uh, being making sure that the work zones are safe or picking up stuff. And so we teach them about that scenario. And then we even go as far as talking to them about work zones at night, what they need to be aware of, how they need to be alert, make sure they're not shutting off that safety part of their brain just because it's nighttime and they're zipping through and trying to get somewhere uh, home. And then of course we have that check that knowledge section right there where we're asking them questions about what they learned. Um, so that's really exciting. We uh, did that in partnership, that's a particular section with ATSA. And so it was done and reviewed by a committee uh, that Lori worked with and we got some great input. Um, 
And um, the next part is really what, I'm, what I think is the most impactful. Ultimately, I don't think teen drivers choose to be work zone safe because if they hit a worker, they're going to get a $10,000 fine. To them, that's almost even unimaginable. Like they don't really know what $10,000 in their pocket looks like. It's kind of monopoly money for them. Our real goal, and I think what that is shared by the foundation, is to give them a reason, a face behind the flag, uh, but then also tie that specifically to their teenage experience. I'm not cool anymore. You know, I hit my 40s. My kids are constantly reminding me, I don't know what the cool movies and music are. Um, they're going to listen to their peers. They're going to hear directly from their peers and how they've been impacted by works on safety. And that is the direction that we've taken with them. And so we give them a combination here of hearing from DOT employees who have been impacted, but also help them hear from their peers. So in the real people, real faces section of this course, you know, sure, they learned that 857 motorists like themselves, you know, left for a drive and never returned home safe. But they also learned for the first time that, you know, in 2020, 117 workers died, left their families and returned home, never got to return home to their loved one. But we immediately go to this section that we've partnered with ATSA on, and that's teens impacted by work zone safety. So we have this great video from the foundation. I want to thank Lori and her team for giving us that and this partnership. And they hear directly from Marcy and Macy Walker, ages 15 and 13, respectively, when their dad was killed in a work zone. So they have to watch that video. It's the testimony of these two girls. They talk about what happened when they received that knock, what they were thinking, where they were at in life. And it places them directly right in the shoes of these teens that are taking that course. And then you hear about the good work of the, of the foundation and how they're supported through scholarships. But what we call out right after they watch this video is, look, these are teens just like you. And if you want to support Marcy and Macy Walker, which hopefully you do after seeing that video, as a new teen driver, you have the choice to make to be work zone safe. And when you choose to be work zone safe, you support not just those two girls, those teenagers and honor the memory of their father, but any parent who's not returning home. And then we tell them and remind them, look, you can receive a scholarship yourself to be recognized and rewarded for your commitment and supporting these teens by being a work zone safe driver yourself. So that's really probably, for me, the best part of the course is that conversation that we're having with teens and connecting that with them. The next part is that we call out our first responders, obviously all those that are on the roadway keeping us safe. I mentioned to you that earlier in the year, we had a trooper here in Oklahoma, Trooper Eric Foster. Um, he was working in a work zone, doing his overtime, um, keeping everybody safe. In front of him was an engineering crew of about eight or nine folks. Um, and the way he describes it is there must have been a, you know, a, a, a protecting hand around him because if he had not have been hit, uh, likely that crew in front of him that was uh, would have been killed or severely injured. And um, he was hit by somebody who was a DUI in a work zone. And so we share that story here with those kids, those teen drivers. And then we, um, you saw that car, I called the Commissioner of Public Safety when this happened, Commissioner Scully, and I said, look, um, can you save uh, Trooper Foster's patrol car, not scrap it? He goes, well, well yeah, well, like, for what? What do you mean? I go, well, we're going to take it out to our events now that we're partnering and we're doing these. And we want Trooper Foster to be able to show up at some of them and tell that story and talk directly to teens. So um, out of that, that tragic and harrowing moment, we were able to uh, um, be able to preserve that, 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 that car. And Trooper Foster is back on duty, serves as the public information PIO affairs officer for the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. And so really we've created a tragedy or uh, there's been a tragedy and created a win-win. The next part is the families impacted forever. Every DOT has something like this, but they'll hear from um, obviously uh, families and widows and those that have been impacted by unsafe work uh, zone driving, and they'll, they'll hear directly from them. And I know as I meet with our ODOT employees, this is powerful. In the quiz section, this to me is very important. It's not abstract. They have to say, what is the name of the uh, highway patrol trooper that was hit in a work zone, Trooper Eric Foster? What were the ages of the two teens uh, when their dad was killed in a work zone? And they have to put in there, you know, 13 and 15. Uh, what was Tim Van Diver's favorite thing to do in the whole world, which was a DOT employee killed in a work zone? And they have to put in there, they have to select, spend time with his family. So it is very real. It is very impactful. It connects directly back their behaviors to that. So um, they put in their contact information here so that we have it for the scholarship. Um, we thank them and we give them a course recap. 
And then as they complete that, what'll happen is, is it populates a PDF certificate um, with their name on it, with a unique serial ID um, that allows them to be a graduate. And then we capture that on the back end so we know that they've graduated successfully uh, from that program. And so that is the overview of the Work Zone Safe course. I'm gonna jump into what our ask is um, and then we'll answer any questions. So the next steps for National Work Zone Safe, and we want this done before April. So before we um, recognize National Work Zone Safe Awareness Week in April, coming up in the spring, we want this program nationally uh, to be taking place in every single state. And that's up to you. And um, if, if uh, we can follow up and we can help, and um, I sent Lori um, some great handouts and PDFs and things that you can share, um, this proposal will be available. We can host a virtual training for you, anything that you need to successfully bring this back to your state. If your chapter, like the Oklahoma chapter, wants to sponsor a scholarship, we'd love to talk to you about that and, and talk to you about how we can do that successfully. If your company or organization wants to be a, a sponsor of this program and join us in promoting this and providing scholarships and helping this get out to different um, uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunities throughout the country, let us know. That's what we're actively doing right now. And then um, ultimately, we want this uh, to be in every single state, this modernized tool, which is available right now that you can put in the hands of driving schools, parents, teens, um, your DOT employees, your contractors are the ones that know the superintendents. They know the local driving school. Um, they know those that'll be out there. Additionally, I will be, and, and, uh, and I'll be there. I'm sure Lori will be there as well, but we're uh, giving a, a presentation at the ATSA um, conference out in Arizona in February. Um, I'll also be at the National Driving School Association uh, conference and rolling this free resource out to them in October out in Florida. Um, I'll be going to, and um, the Secretary of Transportation here in Oklahoma will be having me with them at WASHTO. And so we're getting the word out. We're, we're getting this, 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 this tool and resource to all of our partners in this public sa safety health crisis. It's, it's just imperative uh, that teens have this ability because the Calvary is not coming. Um, when we look at this work zone safety crisis, when we see what's happening on our roads, there's not a silver bullet that's going to show up tomorrow that's going to drop in our laps that's created by somebody else. For those of us who care about uh, driver safety of uh, and our employee safety and our families, it really has to be something that we're championing and, and that we have to look in April and not just see people that are part of our organizations or agencies or um, companies that are wearing the orange ribbon, but we have adopted a new culture of teen drivers who understand, recognize, and are rewarded for being work zone safe. So with that, um, I, will, uh, I will pause and we can take any questions and friends from ODOT can jump on or Lori and happy to, uh, to, uh, to take any questions on what we can do next. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Marty. Uh, really appreciate uh, you speaking today. It was a very informative presentation. At this time, we will take any questions you may have. Please type your questions in the Q&A feature. Uh, we do have one question, so we'll go ahead and, and take that. Um, if you can be able to uh, type in your question. Uh, this question came from Carol. First, she wanted to say thank you uh, for sharing your contact information, Tom. Um, and then also ask, are you available to travel to another state uh, to share this information? Yeah, so if we can work it out where we can get some travel costs covered and whatnot, and um, I'll try to get out there or if there's a virtual option, we can engage on that as well. Um, but our goal, and I know the Secretary of Transportation here in Oklahoma and our chief engineer, their goal is to get this out to as many of their partners as possible. Uh, I, I really commend like Lori and her team and the early partnership and seeing the value of this. What we've talked about is that, look, safety is Switzerland. It's not for, you know, ATSA doesn't just want to hold this in their hand and, and just keep it for themselves. We want to get as many partners who have anything to do with road safety and work zone safety, educated, engaged on this tool and resource. Um, so if there's a way that we can do that through a conference, a meeting, um, or a sponsorship, or, or, or whatever, to be able to support this program, uh, we want it to be the gold standard for teens across the country to know that this program exists and then um, 
for partners like yourself to be able to know that it exists uh, as well and to be able to share that resource readily. So great question. Happy to talk to you offline or shoot me a note. We'll, we'll think about what that looks like and we'll, we'll try to provide a, uh, an opportunity to be able to support you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, are there any more questions? I have a question for you, Tom. You mentioned a little bit earlier in your presentation about hosting an event in the spring, uh, probably in conjunction with National Work Zone Awareness Week. Uh, where it'd be an opportunity uh, for those to come out and volunteer and see kind of how the hands-on portion of the program works. Um, do you want to add a little bit more to that on what your thoughts of how that would look or? Um, yeah, so, so we've talked, absolutely. So we've talked to uh, Maggie Gunnels, who's the Region 6 Administrator, um, and he or she uh, for, for Region 6, which covers Oklahoma. And um, she's on board as is our Secretary of Transportation here in Oklahoma, our Director of Highway Safety Office. We do about 20 hands-on events with teens across the state every year. Um, probably about 60, 70% of those are in the spring as we get them scheduled. So it might not be during Works on Safe Week. I actually know that's a really busy time for all you guys with all the different events and things that you're doing. We don't wanna be in competition per se. We just want you to give you equipped. So. Uh, we'll figure out what date that'll be and the location it'll be. Um, we'll do it close enough to one of our metros, Tulsa or Oklahoma City, so you can fly in. But the idea will be is that at the chapter president's leadership, um, those of you that run or you know leave um, safety or have your um, companies in, in traffic safety, you can come here, DOTs, turnpike authorities, and volunteer and participate in one of our team driver events. Um, and um, do hands-on just like we do. And then we'll do, after it's all over, uh, that night or that evening or that morning, do a, do a lessons learned, and we'll give you the playbook of how we set them up, uh, the templates, everything. And so if this is something that you want to bring back to your state, you'll be able to do that. So we don't have a date yet. I know we'll be working closely with Lori and the ATSA team to, to also promote it and get it out. I'm sure there'll be a, a partner and sponsor with it, but um, it, it'll be spring of 2023. Great. Thank you, Tom. And yes, we look forward to that and we will help promote that as part of partnership with you. Um, Carol and Chat, this is not really a question, but it's more of a, an opportunity. Uh, she suggested contacting Brett Robinson with the American Driver and Traffic Safety Education Association. Um, there's a national conference in Wichita, Kansas next July. Uh, she said it's for the driver education teachers and state administrators. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, we've talked to them. They're excited about tools and resources, particularly ones that are free, right? <laughs> and so what we've talked to the ones about Oklahoma is we um, actually got a letter from our Secretary of Transportation that I wrote with our Commissioner of Public Safety. So like most states, uh, you probably have like a Secretary of Transportation where the transportation part goes up. You, you might have a different person that's cabinet or commissioner level that handles highway safety, department of public safety, highway patrol. For us, that's our commissioner of public safety. And so they uh, signed a joint letter that was uh, to our driving schools in Oklahoma, asking them to voluntarily um, uh, provide work zone safe as a curriculum uh, in, their, in their classes. So uh, with that, I was able to uh, work with our um, driving schools in Oklahoma and starting in the fall, what we're doing is um, where they'll assign this as homework. And so where they're busting at the seams of everything that they have to teach, they're going to start assigning this as homework uh, to their students and then talk about it the next day in class. But that means self-paced on their own teens in Oklahoma will be able to go through this. So that's really an awesome approach that we're looking at. Um, you know, I'd love to work with everybody on this call who's excited about this for National Work Zone uh, Safe Awareness Week in April. I know a lot of times we'll do a letter uh, from our governors or from our Senate and House leadership recognizing National uh, Work Zone Safe uh, Week. What I'd love to do is have um, Secretaries of Transportation, Commissioners of Public Safety um, sign a letter encouraging their driving schools and schools that offer uh, driver's ed to offer this curriculum. Um, and they can do that voluntarily. When asked to do it voluntarily, particularly by those that license them, i.e. the Department of Public Safety, they tend to respond positively to that. So it's that carrot approach, right? That, that seems to be very uh, popular uh, in being able to do that. Thank you. Um... I don't see any more questions in the chat. Um, so with that, we must conclude today's webinar. Thank you again for joining us. Um, 
And thank you again to our panelists, Tom, Lauren, Marty. We appreciate you being here and sharing your information with us. Uh, and for everyone on the call, we hope you get involved with the Team Driver Program and the Foundation. If you have any questions, uh, you see Tom's contact information on the screen. Today's recording will be uploaded to ATSA's website. To access the recording, just visit www.atsa.com. Log in with your ATSA username and password. Uh, and be sure to complete the brief survey you will receive at the conclusion of this webinar. Uh, the Foundation will use the responses to drive content for future webinars. Uh, and that concludes today's presentation. You may now disconnect. <laughs>